Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, Labour's defence policy has been thrown into question following the election of the CND supporting Jeremy Corbyn as leader and the vote by Scottish Labour against the renewal of the Trident nuclear deterrent. Leading what she says is an open-minded review is the Shadow Defence Secretary, Maria Eagle. Welcome to you. Um, first of all, can I ask how many times you have met Jeremy Corbyn one-to-one -to, -one to discuss Trident? I have a meeting in the diary, but I haven't met him yet to discuss that aspect of our review. Are you surprised by that? Well, I'm not. I'm pretty relaxed about it. Um, we are in opposition for five years. This has got to be a serious, meaningful review, uh, and we need to design it properly. He needs to get his feet under the table, and then we'll go ahead, design how we're going to do the review, and get on and do it. We, we were committed at the election to having a much more transparent, public-facing discussion about our place in the world and about what our defence policy mm. should be. It's important we design that correctly before we set off on that path. Now, you're a supporter of the Trident nuclear deterrent. Yeah. Have you heard anything in the Scottish Labour debate about it or in what Jeremy Corbyn supporters have said that has changed your mind or altered your view in any way? Well, not at present, but I, I don't think that's surprising, Andrew, actually, because mm. there are very uh, uh, important and, and, and respectable views held on both sides of this argument. And I don't think that simply setting them out without going through the process of the review is likely to change anybody's mind, which is why we've got to get this right. Now, um, I, I'm not concerned about this. I think that the review is going to be genuine. It's going to be a serious piece of work. It has to be. Um, the Labour Party has had but this policy end, of being pro having a, an independent nuclear deterrent. You Every Labour government has had piece that of work, policy. But in yeah. the end, it's a moral confrontation between two very, very different views of the world. You can't, you can't do it on paper. You can't do the numbers between a moral opposition to Trident and somebody who believes that it's the right thing. Well, look, some people take a moral view of this. Others take a more practical view. Uh, we still have to devise how we would defend our nation and how we would meet our obligations to other nations with or without a nuclear deterrent. And so there is a lot of serious work that has to be done ahead of any decision about this. And at present, of course, the Labour Party does have a policy on this. It's very clear. It was reiterated and reinforced at our conference in Brighton, and that is in favour of renewing mm. the submarines that carry our nuclear deterrent. But you're in this very strange position now where you have a leader who has said very clearly that he would never, ever press the button. And Sir Nick Horton, for instance, expressed the grave, grave concerns of the military. What's the point in having a deterrent if everybody knows the new Prime Minister would never use it? It ceases to be a deterrent. It becomes purely a waste of money. Well, I think we have to explore these ideas of deterrence because Jeremy is certainly... Well, you, you, have clearly, to, you have to convince him to change his mind, don't Well, you? I think we have to have a process that sets out fully the arguments, uh, whether deterrence is effective, mm. whether it works. This requires evidence. It requires a lot of uh, uh, input from our party members, from those who are affected by these decisions, not least our defence industry workers mm. who actually build the submarines yes. and are, are going to be building the submarines uh, 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 up mm. in Barrow. And I think that we can't do that without a serious long-term approach. It's just taken the okay. government a year almost to do their strategic defence and security review because you White, Will, start, I, I, I White Will started it in January because we're all committed to doing such a review. Uh, the idea that the defence team could do a review much mm. in much less time than that is, is for the birds, really. So how, how do you respond to Sir Nick Horton when he said he'd be gravely worried if this policy was translated into power? Well, I understand the point that he's making, and I think the, the, it's a point that I made myself when Jeremy said what he said. I, I said that there are those who don't believe that deterrence works. I'm not one of them. Uh, I think Jeremy's point of view is about whether or not he believes in the effectiveness of deterrence. Now, these are arguments that we can have uh, within the process of our mm. defence review, a space to be discussed, to be debated, to be argued out, and for conclusions to be come to, uh, to, to, for us to come to conclusions in due course. Are you comfortable with the CDS involving himself in this, this debate? 
I think he has to answer questions from mm. journalists such as yourself when, when he's asked, and I'm completely comfortable with that. Um, he clearly does believe that deterrence works. He said mm. that in terms. Uh, so do I, as it happens. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him expressing okay. himself in those terms. So just coming back one more time, um, it has to be a long and serious review, yeah. and everyone's got to be open about it and make the arguments in front of the public and so forth. But at the end of that, if you have a leader who is completely committed to never pressing the button, the whole thing is, in your words, for the birds, isn't it? Well, I think we have to get, go through that process uh, and see what comes out of it. And then in the end, you have to persuade him that you're well, right, don't yes, you? Yes, and I, have, uh, I, I, I will be attempting to do that. We will base our decision on the review, on the outcomes of yeah. the review. The Labour Party has its policy-making structures, and uh, uh, we will feed our review into those structures and uh, the, mm. the great good sense of the Labour Party and its members and supporters will, will come to a conclusion in the end. N nobody really knows what that conclusion will be at this Could point. Could you be Secretary of State for Defence in a unilateralist Labour government? I am not a unilateral uh, disarmer, a nuclear disarmer. I don't believe that that works. Um, I think I would find it difficult. But we're not there yet. We have a big process right. to go through. And I think um, we should engage in that. We should engage the country in these discussions. Because for too long, I think, Andrew, uh, these decisions have been taken behind closed doors. Part Agreed. of the reason Agreed. why, why but, Jeremy got elected is on the back of this sense out there, and it's not just in the Labour Party, that people want a bigger say in decision making in this country on big, important issues like right. this. Um, at the end of this long process, what then happens? Because the Labour Party has to come to a view. Is there going to be a sort of special conference? Do you think that those new members should be part of that? Or is it going to be fundamentally for parliamentarians? Well, it'll be for our policy-making processes. And that's the National Policy Forum. Uh, our reviews will feed into that. Uh, the National Policy Forum and the NEC uh, about having a way day about um, the, the policy making processes over the next Lucky year them. or two. Okay. So I can't, I can't say precisely, but it will feed into our processes and at the end we'll have an answer. All right. The other big issue we've been talking about today, of course, is Syria and yeah. the bombing of Syria. Now, Philip Hammond is waiting there to see if he can persuade enough Labour MPs to support bombing in Syria to, to go back to the Commons for another vote on this. What's going to happen, in your view, on the Labour side? Well, I, I think it would help if the government came forward with proposals, uh, which I haven't done yet. We've seen all this noise in the newspapers and briefings and denials about the fact that they've been trying to persuade mm. uh, Labour MPs. I've seen nothing of that. There have been some general briefings amongst backbench colleagues about the situation in Syria, but nobody has come forward with proposals. Now, we have been very clear about this. We will treat with the utmost seriousness any proposal the government comes forward with on s the situation mm. in Syria. But they must tell us what the legal basis is. They must tell us what the aims and objectives are, what the, uh, is hoped to be achieved by adding our planes into the 60 countries who are already there, engaged in action in Syria, what's the military advantage. And we must come up with a process through right. the United Nations to make sure that we can tackle okay. the root cause of this problem, which is, of course, a civil war in Syria. Simon Fisher, who is a young, enthusiastic socialist who's been advising your leader, appears to have advised people in a particular constituency to vote for class war rather than a Labour Party candidate, and he's been suspended by the NEC for that. Is suspension enough? Should he be fired for it? Well, as far as I'm aware, um, his suspension is an administrative suspension. Uh, whilst there's an investigation that goes on, that, that is not unusual. It does not carry with it any suggestion that he's guilty or not guilty. But the NEC which is uh, charged with doing these things, they have all the fun, uh, they have <laughs> to investigate and they will do that and at the end of that process they will make a decision about the future of Mr Fisher. I, I rechristened him uh, Simon he's Fisher, Andrew. he's Andrew Fisher, he of course indeed. he's Andrew yeah. Fisher, um, and he's clearly an enthusiast. A lot of people around, around the new leadership come from, as it were, part, uh, parts of the world to the left of the traditional Labour Party. Are you concerned there's been too much of that already? Well, I Coming don't in. think, it, I think it's good that new people are joining the Labour Party. I mean, for years we've talked about increasing our membership, 164,000 uh, new members. I think that's important. I think uh, we're going to have a lot of debates that perhaps will go wider now mm. than they have in, in the past 20 years. But if you're confident of your argument, if you're confident that politics matters, that the Labour Party matters, you welcome these things, and I do. 
Maria Eagle, you have a fascinating few months ahead of you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Simon Russell Beale is regularly referred to as the leading actor of his generation. A regular on our screens in everything from spooks to Shakespeare. He's back on the stage in London's West End playing the leading actor of another generation in Mr. Foote's Other Leg. He plays the 18th century stage star Samuel Foote, an actor.